Cal Payne with EQD, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 46. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is apparently no one, since I'm the only one here. But I do have a guest host, and that guest host is Red Pear. Hello. How are you, Red? I'm pretty good. Awesome. Sounds like you have the sniffles. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm getting through it. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I mean, I hope you don't come down with a cold, because a cold during a cold weather is not fun. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, um, our guest for this week is Cal Payne from EQD. Hey, everyone. Good to be here. How are you, Cal Payne? I'm a little tired. The semester just started, so it's been kind of hectic. Yeah, school. I remember those days. They were fun. Sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, fun is the right way to describe it there. Yeah. I hope I'm not disturbing you at this, what is it, early hour? Um, it's about um, 11 p.m. here um, on the East Coast, but it's not too late. I'm usually a night owl anyway. Okay. I'm guessing most of the bronies are because I know I am. <laughs> yeah. Most of the bronies, I think, are, at, at least the ones I know, are like on the Pacific Coast and stuff like that. Yeah. Personally, for me, if I'm not in bed by 3, that's too late. And I mean 3 a.m. <laughs> yes. Um, I actually say it's around maybe 3, 4, 5 a.m., depending on when things need to get posted and what work I'm doing at the time. Yeah. So I go to bed pretty late. I don't know. I have this thing in my head. I should go to bed early. Like, okay, 12, I should go to bed now. Hmm, maybe a few episodes of Doctor Who. Okay, 3 a.m. Nope. Uh, <laughs> I suffer from the same thing. Uh, distractions, they're awesome. So before we start the show, I have to ask you the four important questions. Wow, I haven't asked that one for a while. So, um, who's your favorite pony, Calpine? <laughs> oh, well, that would be um, Twilight Sparkle, of course, because she's the best nerd on the whole show, and she's just absolutely adorable. <laughs> okay, Twilight Sparkle, because she's a nerd. Um, I haven't heard about that one before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I'm kind of a nerd, too, so I relate with her, pretty much. <laughs> I think everybody in the fandom is a nerd, but uh, they're just me. <laughs> Uh, I guess, um, well, she is pretty popular, so maybe there is something there. <laughs> yeah, okay. I could say that she's the librarian bookworm type that is kind of um, hot when you get to know her well kind of deal. <laughs> I guess you could say it that way. Yeah. We know how librarians are. Fictional librarians, actually, not the real ones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what's your favorite episode? Oh, that's a tough one, but... Um... I still have a soft spot for um, Sister Hood's social from season two. I don't know, it was just a really sweet episode, and I really like Rarity and Sweetie Belle in that one. It was just very good. Uh, that is a good one, because uh, the twist near the end, for casual viewers, they won't get it until it's revealed, but for the hardcore Applejack and Rarity fans, they get it straight away. As for me, I didn't get it at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice it either, but I was um, thoroughly impressed when um, that they had the cues there the entire time. So it was pretty impressive. Um, big kudos to the show staff for doing that. It's true. Um, it's because the actions that they did, like Rarity eating a whole pie like Applejack, you won't see that. You won't see her doing that normally. Yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, um, so it's Sister Who Social. Awesome, awesome. So how did you become a fan of the show? Um, pretty much like um, most people early on in the fandom, they um, pretty much discovered the show randomly off of some sort of source. Um, for me, for instance, it was a um, forum that I was, I don't even remember the name of it anymore, but it was when I frequented, like, back in the early 2011, I think somewhere around February, and um, I was searching through the normal threads you know, the typical threads of the day, see if there are any updates, and I saw that there was um, this pony thread that was at the very top of the um, um, general forum that was there, and I wondered, what the hell is this? I mean, why is why is there a thread about ponies here at the very top of the general thread here for this forum? So I checked it out, um, saw some very funny and interesting um, um, screen caps and stuff like that when they were incredibly popular. And I decided to um, check out a very early pony PMV. Ooh. And um, I got to see some of the animation from the show through that PMV. And it got me very interested in the show due to its smooth animation and such like that. So I looked it up on YouTube. 
and found the first episode, watched it, and immediately fell in love with it. Wow, that's interesting because I think getting to know the show from forums, this might be new for me. I haven't heard about that one before. Oh, it's um, it was quite common back in, in the day. Um, a lot of forums had their own little pony threads, um, regardless of what the content of the forum was actually for. I've seen pony threads pop up on um, forums for Gmod, for um, League of Legends, for Minecraft... I've seen, um, actually part of one of the first communities I actually joined was the um, forum community over on NeoGAF, which is a gigantic... um, Gaming... Yeah, exactly. It's a a huge gaming forum, and they have their own pony community over there that they started up, and uh, it was one of my first communities. A lot of word about pony was spread through forums and such like that, which makes sense considering its origins were around 4chan and all the threads around there and co during the time. 4chan. Without without it, we won't get them any attention for ponies. Seriously, how ironic, really! It's it's really ironic. Yeah, definitely. It's it's weird that um, they are not really heard of anymore, um, considering their importance to the um, initial starting up fan base. Things have really have really changed since the early days. I think the reason is it's like Fight Club. You don't talk about uh, 4chan, so is that kind of deal? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. You usually hear that in um, just general, you know, internet knowledge. You just don't really talk about 4chan. You know it's there, but you don't try to talk about it. Uh, don't bring logic into it because it's uh, illogical, I guess. <laughs> it's a crazy place. It, it's a very interesting part of the internet. True, true. I've heard a few guests said that they were from 4chan, and, well, um, sometimes it shows that they're from 4chan with all the materials that they like, but... They do most amazing things, like a few person I know. I wish I could remember the name right now. Oh, I'm a bad host. Uh, I should not host alone, but hey, this is only me. And I got red. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, moving on to my final question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? That's actually an interesting one. I first, When I first started watching the show, I myself um, couldn't believe that I actually liked it. But it was something exciting, and I really enjoyed watching it so it was kind of just a excited charged energy for me i uh quickly shared the show with my sister who had well actually heard of it before me <laughs> but hadn't gotten into it really but i i pulled her into it even further so we both became big fans of the show and it was actually several months until i finally just um talked to my parents about it because you know yeah we had the hub so we were able to watch it live and it's kind of hard to um it's kind of hard to walk around that you like ponies when you're watching it live at your house. <laughs> so, explain it to the parents and stuff. They thought it was pretty amazing that something like this had popped up. And um, now my um, parents are actually very active, um, encouraging elements with the um, pony community and the things I do in it. And um, they like that I'm in it. Oh, awesome. When you said talking to your family about it, it reminds me of that one video about that kid trying to um, talk to his parents that he likes ponies. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's always an awkward situation. I, I don't think there is too many unawkward coming out of the stable stories. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I don't know. I mean, if it's something adult content, like, hey, parents, I like X, and I hope you don't mind that I like X. Well, if they understand, oh, it's normal son or daughter to like X. But if it's ponies and you're a guy watching it, then like they're thinking like, oh my god, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. It can be a little, a little scary, a little awkward. I do admit, but you know, it's, I think it's worth coming out and telling people and stuff like that. It's not worth hiding things unless you, I guess, you know for sure that it would have a bad outcome. I guess. Uh, that's true. That's true because we know. Some parents are the traditional type where boys must like boy stuff, football, guns, and girls, I think. <laughs> yeah, some people <clears throat> are, are can be very good at lumping people in the stereotypes and stuff like that. But I've seen a lot of really good stories about people telling their parents. So a lot of people, they have found it to be worth it. So that's good. Okay, cool. So um, those are my questions, and I think we can move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. So in today's news time, Munchy Pony collectible tins. 
If you are only living in New Zealand, then you're in luck. Hot Shots, the company that's making the Mr. Munchy cookies, are selling My Little Pony collector tins. Currently, the collector tins can be only found in New Zealand and are being sold at the warehouse. I think it's like a Target or Walmart. But anyway, um, pictures can be found in the show notes. So, Kathleen, I know you've seen this because you work at EQD, but what about you, Red? Well, actually, I think I might have run across it in one of the roundups, but honestly, this is, um, I just heard about the tins. I didn't know they were like cookie tins. Personally, I kind of like this tin because of the, well, I won't say pointy, but it's more of a real square. And since, well, you know, card gamers or people who collect trading cards, this tin would be awesome for them. Yeah, I would have to agree. But it's too bad that they're selling this in New Zealand only. I know, it makes me wish I was in New Zealand so I could pick up one. Maybe um, we'll get some New Zealand bronies that are willing to ship some over for a cost. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, for you, Kelpin, did you do anything because you've seen most of the crew working with ponies, and I, I guess that you can get autographs for them? Uh, well, if you can get close to them, they're usually very busy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, like you said, it's not a promise. <laughs> I can try and get you one. But hey, give me a tin and I'll see what I can do. It might not be for a while, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, have you seen the box from Hot Topic, the vinyl box? Um, I have seen it, yeah, just online stuff like that. I, there's no hot topics, or, topics around here. <laughs> oh, I was wondering, is it the same quality? Is it a metal box or a paper box? Or, well, cardboard box, actually. So I was thinking, is it worth it to get that one instead of this one? Because this one looks good with its embossed ponies, but the vinyl one looks kind of nicer. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I can't really um, tell you since I haven't bought it myself. Mm. Um, I know that my... I'd imagine it's cardboard, though. Just how, just how things usually are. Okay. Well, but if uh, one of the two are the same and the vinyl's better, you guys have a leg up from the Kiwis down here. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, moving on to the next topic. Mimoko, Key's Pony Flash Drive at CES. So recently, CES was this past week, and Mimoko, well known for their Mimobot flash drive, have teased some of their latest products at CES. Some of the products being displayed range from Transformers, Star Trek, and even My Little Pony. Most of this exclusive Mimobot flash drive comes preloaded with digital extras. These extras are wallpapers, icon, comics, behind the scene content, and many more from each respective brands. Pictures can be found in the show notes. Who here are weirded out by this flash drive? I think they look pretty cool. They um, remind me of um, some fan-made efforts that have um, been put forth to introduce ponies and flash drives together. <laughs> and I know they actually sell pretty well, so I imagine these ones would be pretty popular once um, they end up on, on the market. I hope so, because um, for me, I, I don't think I'll be getting them because they look weird. <laughs> yeah, they look a little. They look a little odd, and the fact that you pull off their foreheads to get to the to get to the stick within is a little awkward. <laughs> but I think they'll sell decently. Yeah, I mean, some people in my group said that they want to buy them and stuff. But no, um, the the real thing for me is if I were to get this, is the extra contents because I've seen trailers for the two other brands like the Transformers and Star Trek. And they preloaded it with wallpapers, icons, um, classic comics from Star Trek and Transformers. And even behind the scenes of said movie IP, I, I'm not sure what they mean by behind the scenes. From the trailers I've seen, they're just behind the scenes stuff. Like, did you know certain person did this in show or something like that? And they yeah, even exactly. inserted sound clips or soundboards of the person talking, I don't know, like in Transformers, it's like Autobots roll out, and in Star Trek, I'm not a Trekkie, so I got no idea what they say. Well, we can hope then for some good content, but hopefully, because if that's the case, um, people are going to just buy these up to grab at this extra content. We know from we know from the people that visit our site and stuff like that, that people just love behind-the-scenes info and extra goodies and stuff like that, so that'll definitely be a huge selling point. I mean, for me personally, I would love to get the DVD that you guys have with commentaries from the crew. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, that would be... That's that's definitely a great thing to get your hands on. They did a good job putting that together, and I hope they continue doing the commentary thing and stuff like that for future season releases. Yeah. 
we are a strange bunch of people asking for this kind of things. If you, if you think about it, the demographic is what? Age range around four to six or maybe older. But what they're doing is mostly adult stuff like um, director's commentary, crew commentary, behind the scenes. I don't think kids would really want that, but oh my gosh, they're doing it for us. Exactly, and that's what's so great about it. They yeah. really do love the community, and they want to make sure that these products are, um, are you know, good and um, have material that we want. So it's not only good for the demographic audience, but it's also good for us. So everyone wins. Yeah, that's true. Awesome, awesome. And moving on to the next topic. There are no toilets in Equestria. Not. So recently, someone asked Lauren Faust, how are the toilets shaped in Equestria? And with that, Lauren's answer was, There are no toilets in Equestria. They are horses. They poop on the ground and fertilize the flower. This answer was clearly meant as a joke, but people took the answer seriously. Lauren Faust has issued an apology and did not think that it would be taken seriously. Links can be found in the show notes. Ah, so, <clears throat> um, what did you think? I thought it was one of the funnier things to happen this week. Um, when I saw that answer, when I saw that answer from Bor, and I, um, I initially thought she can't be serious, can she? But you know, we quickly said in that it was obviously a joke. Yeah. And um, when Seth put it up on Equestria Daily, he also did it all tongue in cheek, like. But despite despite how tongue in cheek it was, um, I guess some people were a little upset. <laughs> really? I mean, okay. Like, I, okay, I can understand why, because Lauren Faust is God in the pony world. Whatever she says goes. But sometimes people have to remember that she's not working on the show anymore. And whatever she say is not canon, even though she built the world. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky situation for people. And it's a, a fine line to, you know, tread when dealing with um, comments and stuff like that especially from people that don't work on the show anymore and someone as important as Lauren is for, you know, the creation of ponies and setting up the framework and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can understand why people say her word is a law, but sometimes you need to take it with a grain of salt because she's not working on it anymore. I, I know it's kind of strange to say that, but she's not working on it anymore. What else can I say? That's true, and also you just got to remember that is that she's a person too, and she will, will like to joke and kid around. So you it's know, it's true, it's true, it's true. But if somebody really remembered um, the episode over a barrel, the Peace Peaks episode, um, Pinkie Pie went to the bathroom, and well, if you're from Asia, I'm guessing you know how bathroom stalls work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if I'm thinking correctly, yes. Yes, it's the squatting toilet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I'm guessing it works like that, but, well, um, with that in mind, go Google it if you really want to look at it. <laughs> uh, Lyra might prefer a um, sitting toilet, though. Yes, yeah, true indeed. Like, um, sitting toilets are fun and nice. And I'm not sure about hygiene, because I'm not going to go into that. Anyway, moving on to the next news topic. So, um, next news is, Andrew Francis did not voice Brayburn. This is, that's a shock. Anyway, um, after receiving... The question from a fan asking him, did he do the voice for Brayburn or was it Michael Dangerfield? Andrew's answer was, I'm looking into it watching the episode which I've never seen right now. After reviewing the episode, he was shocked to discover that he was not the voice for Brayburn. Links can be found in the show notes. So, um, I'm shocked. Seriously, I am shocked. I was too. I didn't expect something like this to pop up anywhere. I, Especially like a year and a half after the episode aired. I mean... I had just assumed that um, they would have at least told him um, before the episode was aired or during production or something like that. That's true. That he wasn't used. <laughs> okay, the, the thing is, like, I got no idea where I heard it from, but it's like um, somebody said that, okay, um, Brayburn, Andrew Francis did it. And then, like, okay, yay, um, don't think much about it. And until recently, um, Las Pegasus uh, Unicorn? They said that Brayburn, voiced by Michael Dangerfield, the the original voice actor for him. So, like, I was kind of shocked at the results. Like, really? What? Why? How? How? I know. It's such a huge surprise, right? Yeah. And no wonder there's this thing that I've noticed when uh, Andrew Francis said um, Appaloosa. It's, 
it doesn't sound the same, if you get what I mean. Yeah, I've seen that comment pop up quite a few times, but um, as uh, most people have um, mentioned after stating that they notice his um, Brayburn isn't spot on, is that they'd like to bring up that it, earlier in the year, well, earlier last year, he um, had had some, oh, he had strained his vocal cords or something like that, and so people just assumed he just wasn't, you know, up to full strength yet to do his Brayburn. Uh-huh. So people kind of, you know, pushed it off to the side as a result. Oh, well, okay, so that explains a few things, but now with this, uh, well, all you Brayburn fans liking that Brayburn voice is not Andrew Francis. At least he's still a great shining armor. Yes, indeed. And that twily bit he always does, from what I can exactly. tell, it always gives people the heart attacks. Exactly. So he, he's going, he'll still be just as loved as he always has been. Yes. It gives us another person to love, too. Yes. Well, <laughs> for those Brayburn fans, I know a few of you exist out there, so um, go love Michael Dangerfield. Exactly. Uh, moving on to the next topic is MLP Facts of the Week. All of these informative facts can be found at twitter.com slash mlpfacts. So, did you guys know that the cake twins were originally pound cake and patty cake? And patty was changed to pumpkin cake? I actually did not know that. Me neither, actually. I got no idea where this guy gets his info from. <laughs> <laughs> because it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, could be. It's interesting, really. Like, patty cake and pound cake. I, I heard the kids playing that patty cake game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it would be fun, but uh, pumpkin cake sounds cuter. So anyway, moving on to the next one. Did you guys know that the referee for the Wonder Bolts Derby in Sweet and Elite stands on a cloud, even though he's not a Pegasus or a unicorn? I did not notice that. I had to That's double check, and it is. It's an Earth Pony. I always have bad, bad eyes when it comes to catching that kind of stuff. I'm always surprised after an episode to see all the people say, Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, th- that's why you need to watch it twice to see what people are talking about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but um, my theory is you ask an Earth Pony to do it because he won't use magic to cheat and he's not biased because he's not a Pegasus. Ah, true. That is a that is a good theory. Yeah. But also, he could be used by the mob. If you don't call it out as how I see, you're going to fall to the ground. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the last one. Did you guys know there are two versions of Season 1 in German version? Because Nickelodeon once forgot to calculate the PAL speed up. And bonus fact from us, the reason is North America uses NTSC while European countries use PAL. And these SC transmit at 30 frames per second with each frame making up 525 individual scan lines, while PAL transmit at 25 frames per second with each frame making up 625 individual scan lines. I got no idea what that does, but it has something to do with something. It's an interesting thing to know. I've always wondered what the difference was between NTSC and PAL. Yeah, it's true. I- I've never got it before because. For me, down here, it doesn't really matter because all shows are foreign, the ones I like. Um, mm-hmm. Funny enough, most of the North America use NTSC, and so does Japan. But the rest of the world uses PAL. That's true. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it was developed that way. All I know is it makes things kind of painful when trying to get <laughs> get material from other countries. Yeah, it's true. Not to be mean to you, but from what I can understand, American wants to be different. <laughs> Look at your cars. You drive on the left side of the road. That is true. We do tend to do things a little differently here in the U.S. <laughs> yes. But what do I know? I'm liking a show for Americans, but I'm reporting it in Asia. <laughs> Says a lot about me, then. <laughs> true. So, anyway, moving on to guest time. And today's guest, we have Carl Payne from EQD. So, how are you, and are you enjoying yourself? I am enjoying myself, and I am doing pretty good. A little sleepy, but, you know... If I'm moving a bit fast, it's because I don't want to disturb him. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's perfectly good. All right. <laughs> I, would, I guess I would have told you to slow down if that was the reason why you're doing, going so fast. <laughs> it's true. And I also could be nervous. I don't know. <laughs> Silly me. So anyway, um, to slow things down, why don't you tell everyone out there who you are and what you do for the people who do not know you? Well, as you said, I'm Cal Payne. I am a blog author on the Pony website, um, Equestria Daily. 
um, we handle and aggregate a bunch of the pony news that's out there, whether it be um, music, artwork, um, comics, tumblers, anything you can really think of. And we put it into one convenient place to um, allow people to have access to it. Um, we recently cre- um, crossed um, 300 million hits, and um, we hope to have many more millions to come. Congratulations. Uh, hitting 300, 300 million, right? Yep, 300 million. Yeah, tre- hitting 300 million is not an easy task for you. <laughs> no. We, but we uh, thank everyone that comes and visits the site. It's all, it's all on them. They're all awesome, and we love having them. Yes, I go there every day to look for news. <laughs> That's good to hear. That's good to hear. It means someone's reading our articles. <laughs> yeah, I try and read them all, but eh. <laughs> I, I read I them. I read them seriously. I do. I have hard keeping track of them. <laughs> it's true. Music of the day. Um, that one is a new one for me. Yeah, it was, um, there's just so much music and such like that. We decided to start compiling them into those posts. <laughs> awesome. So anyway, my first question is the obvious one. How did you get into EQD? <laughs> Um, it's, uh, at times, I don't even know how I got into it, to tell you the truth. Um, all I know is that way back, I initially contacted um, Equestria Daily when I was um, in NeoGAF and such like that, and part of the Know Your Meme community. I started sending them each day um, emails of things I would find. If there were new comics coming out on DeviantArt or elsewhere, I'd send them links. Um, I used to send them... Oh, big emails filled with different types of pony plushes and customs and all that kind of stuff. So I was contributing to the site for many months, um, basically starting, I think, around April or May. Then around October, I contacted the site um, for a, an, an event I wanted to do called the December Draw-Off. And that was, um, that was last year in December. And um, Seth agreed to it and such like that. Um, the Equestria Daily people would be the judges and we get some artists in on that. And during my third week of that event, um, where I was at that moment just um, copying and pasting HTML that I had created for Seth to put into posts that he would post up, um, during the third week, um, Seth just um, sent an email back to me said, uh, saying, um, how would you like to post it yourself? <laughs> and um, <laughs> that kind of blew me out of the water, I've got to say. I did not expect that at all. Um I was incredibly excited and flattered, and I will admit I'm a bit nervous at first. Um, I accepted, and um, my very first post was that um, was that draw off post back in um, December. I was accepted on December 23rd, um, and I guess I got in because of the stuff that I contributed and the event, and um, just showing gumption or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. It's been a great ride. Well, I have to say, uh, that story is awesome because I, I think it shows that anyone can join EQD if they can show they're really interested and hardworking enough to do the work. And not only that, but they also look for people that are very diverse in the things that they send in and stuff like that. Um, as I said, I was sending in all manner of things. We do have dedicated people that send in things like just comics, just art, stuff like that. And it also helps to get to know um, the staff a little bit, bit more and stuff like that. Um, like, I was already um, kind of friends with Seth before he invited me on, and through just chatting with him through email and stuff like that. So that definitely helps. Oh, awesome, awesome. So what is it that you actually do on EQD? Because I've seen every time a Pony Plush compilation comes up, you're the one to review it or something like that. And so basically, what did you do on EQD? Um, well, in the very beginning, it was very specific. I was um, primarily the plush um, compiler, the custom compiler, and the comic um, poster. Um, those are my main things because those were the main things I sent in. So instead of sending things in the EQD, I just found the stuff and put it up on my own accord. As um, time went on, though, my tasks started to diversify a bit. I um, eventually started doing the nightly roundups, which I am still the primary person responsible for all of that, and I started doing other posts such as, um, well, anything that really needed to be done, like convention posts, and um, I'm also did a few draw friends, and well, nowadays I'm responsible for the Sunday edition of Draw Friend. I um, have created a few um, features that have um, either been neglected by EQD or are brand new in themselves. I um, continued on the Tumblr spotlight thing, which I'm and still doing. I do live stream Saturdays for artists and stuff like that. 
and I also um, had a, f- a feature that I really need to get back to called Blast from the Past that oh, um, I try to introduce newer fans of the show to some of the old stuff that um, you know us earlier folks in the fandom really loved when we were first getting into it and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember seeing that one because it was, like you said, a Blast from the Past because for me, I've been in the fandom since I forgot early early in 2011 I sorry no um, yeah early in 2011 and I've come late into the game on EQD so when I was there I think I can remember about EQD at first was um, looking at news but I don't really remember for me it was kind of derpy how I stumbled on into EQD <laughs> that's how a lot of people find EQD is they is they stumble upon it accidentally or someone has linked it in a chat or a forum or something like that. So you're in good company. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So how many emails do you receive per day? I mean, does the mail that EQGD gets is sent to everyone or is just sent to Steph? It's just sent to a um, box we have set up called the Submit Box. Um, there we all have a password to it and we are allowed to sort and grab whatever catches our interest. Um, when we're inside the box. All of us can be active in the box at once. And about your email question about how much we get, um, I'd say we do get, like, at least, I'd say 300 to 500 emails a day. A day? Yes. Oh, my. I wish I got 500 to 300 emails a day from the fans. I get zero, literally. Oh, well, it's, it's, not, it's not all good. A lot of the stuff it does... It's either, you know, repeats or, you know, it's something that we just can't put on the site for whatever reason or it fails for, like, if it fails, like, you know, quality, you know, control type tests or if it's just inappropriate for the site, things like that. So it's not all good. Okay, I can understand. I can understand. So uh, could you run me the process of how you do things? Example, if I were to say, um, post up something and I link you guys with an email saying, um, hey guys, I've got episode number 46 featuring Calpain and I submit it to the submit box so run me through how does it work behind the scenes well there's actually a lot of different processes for each um, type of post that we do for instance like plushy and um, custom compilations um, when I'm sorting those I take a look to see if um, just the overall quality of the plush and um, compare how many you know, good quality plushes I have compared to, like, maybe, you know, ones that could use some work. And I try to adjust the ratio a little bit so um, that there are some that are, you know, they're not perfect, but they're, you know, they are showing improvement as an artist, and hopefully by putting them in to the plushie compilation, they'll be able to, you know, take that as an encouragement and continue going on with their craft and stuff like that. So there's a lot of personal judgment into things like compilations and for a lot of the stuff on the site as well. For things like the nightly roundup and stuff like that, we just, um, a lot of the stuff, like um, podcasts and st- stuff like that, we try to make sure things are in a certain format, for instance, that makes it easy to copy um, and paste? put it into the roundup. What's that? Copy and paste? Oh, yeah. Copy and paste is always nice. Um, link, of course, links to show notes um, um, to your episode, obviously. Um, <laughs> and things like that are much appreciated. And yeah, if, as long as you include things in your podcast, like copy and paste and, you know, just the appropriate links and stuff like that. And also don't use, like, funky formatting and stuff like that because that makes blogger cry. <laughs> you will probably end up in that particular section um, for, like, podcasts or any section of the news for the nightly roundup and stuff like that. Of course, some of that stuff outside of, like, podcasts, um, meetups... <laughs> And groups looking for more and stuff like that. We tend to do a quality control on that for the, like the main news articles that are in the nightly roundup. So you know, if it's something that is completely uninteresting or we feel will be offensive to a bunch of people or something like that, we won't put it in the roundup. Okay, understandable, understandable. But um, how do you? Okay, let's say for example, if somebody says, oh, "I want to get this meetup be well known on," well, I want this meetup to be a success, so I should post it up on EQD. So what do you guys look for, or what do you guys recommend people doing? Well, for meetups and stuff like that, um, what I do recommend you doing is not announcing your meetup, like, super early, like three weeks before or something like that. Like, announce it the week before your meetup, 
so that um, people will remember it. Because what what annoys us a little bit is are the people that um, I mean, it's okay to do it like maybe two, maybe three times to send in the same information on a meetup. But um, if you're constantly sending it in like every day, like can you post this? Can you post this? Can you post this? It um, gets a little irritating. I got to say. But um, for those looking to, you know, start a meetup and want to know if they can be at EQD, helpful things are, like, of course, your location, what time it's going to be, things like um, what you plan to do. And um, it always helps to have some color in the roundup. So if you make, like, a cool little banner that has your time and dates on it and, um, you know, some ponies or something on it, it usually helps your post because people will look at it things like that. We barely, we barely reject, um, meetups and stuff like that because we know people want to, you know, get together and things like that. Usually ones that are just criminally, you know, neglecting and giving us, um, information. Like they don't give us anything on time or place. Don't go in. Uh, okay. So be specific with your posts and requests and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Most people are good about that because, well, you got to be specific because it's, well, Usually a group of strangers getting together, so you got to be pretty specific on exactly what you're doing. Otherwise, no one's going to show up. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like, oh, you got correct list for that. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I pass on the question to Red. So Red, do you have any questions? Do you have a favorite brony? A favorite brony? Yeah, like um, artist or musician or writer at all, or even your boss. <laughs> That's <laughs> yes. Santa's is my favorite brony. <laughs> oh, but seriously, but seriously. Oh, that's a hard one because I've made so many friends in the fandom, and I like them all for you know tons of different things. I know a lot of artists and musicians and stuff like that. Um, people who make PMVs, people who make um, uh, like Rainbow Dash presents and Double Rain Boom and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, it's really hard to pin down. So uh, my answer to this is just like um, I would say about most ponies is that um, all ponies are best pony and, mo- and all bronies are best brony. <laughs> awesome. I can argue with you with that because if we pick and choose, then we'll be in, well, we'll be stuck in one place and not move on. Mm, yes. I mean, it's okay to have your favorites, but it's also good to support everyone in the community as a whole, especially if they're doing good work. True, true. So, um... I'm not sure if everybody knows this, but you're a scientist, is that true? Yes, I am. Um, I'm still one in training, technically, but I am a scientist. I am currently in my first year of my PhD program, and I am studying um, neurodegenerative medicine, primarily focused right now on Parkinson's disease. Oh my, wow, you must be a really smart pony. No wonder Twilight's your favorite. (laughs) Yes, it's... We're kindred spirits, I guess. Oh, okay, for you, Calpin fans out there, if you see him at the meetup, give him that one We Love Fine shirt that says Science with Twilight on the front. Give him that. Uh, he will love it. I love that. I would love you forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, that a scientist, wow, um, I would not imagine that a scientist would love ponies. Um, what do you colleagues think about it? Oh, my colleagues? Yeah. Oh, the thing is with um, colleagues and stuff like that, we're usually all so busy. Oh, I haven't really even talked to them about it. I'm in a new place, and so I'm just getting to know them anyway. So oh. I don't really know if they're even fans of animation or not. So yeah, if I did have one person in our lab, though, um, while we were doing some microscopy slides, um, out of the blue just mentioned how how much better our um, microscope would look if it had like, My Little Pony stickers on it. <laughs> so I don't know if she was a, a secret brony or not. So I'm going to have to dig a little deeper there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you just wore a shirt that says um, for science with Twilight in the front, I mean, it, it's just a shirt. Nobody would think much about it. And then for the people who know more about it, like, ah, you're a brony. Awesome. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I, all I need to do is like drop a 20% cooler reference around her and see if she flinches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so awesome. Do tell us if it works out. <laughs> for sure. So basically, you're in a new place, nobody knows that you're a brony, and you've got no idea who is a brony. Well, actually, um, I had a meetup when I, the, like the month after I first came to this new place. So I do know there are a few, quite a few um, bronies on campus. I haven't met them all yet, and I recently got an email from someone on campus asking if for help to set up a, um, 
brony club of sorts um, on the campus. So we'll see where that goes. There could be quite a few of them. <laughs> Wait, um, does that mean people know you're Calpine or just somebody else at random? Oh, they know I'm Calpine. So ah. I've hung out with a few of the fans and stuff like that of EQD, of the show, of all that. So it's fun hanging out with them. I need to do it again sometime. That's awesome because I thought in a new place nobody knows you. Well, um, I guess they know one of the admins. Go, hunt him down. <laughs> I I gotta admit, um, it's been really nice though because uh, without ponies, I think um, moving to this new place it would have been even tougher because I literally would have known nobody. So it's been helping me this past um, oh four or five months get settled in here. I, I can understand because ponies is the glue to friendship. Seriously. Without ponies, we won't be talking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> friendship true. is magic. Yes, true indeed. And I'm thinking that there's, well, basically no reason for us to talk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, seriously, if you do think about it, what do I have in common with you? Seriously, nothing besides ponies. Yeah, and it's it's that initial thing that gets us talking with each other and then you find out other interests of that person and you become friends. That's a It's a great thing to have something to break the ice with. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true because I'm kind of a hermit myself and I've got a close circle of friends and we basically play card games and well, my circle of friends are not expanding like I how I like it to be after ponies. My circle of friends, oh my lordy lordy lord, let's just say that I have a friend in the States, I have a friend in Jerusalem, and I have a friend in, well, I think Sweden? I'm not sure, but let's just say Pony expand my friendship. Oh yeah, I think it's done that for just about everybody. It's an amazing thing to watch, and um, you just make so many friends in this community. It's great. It's true, it's true. Sorry if I'm jumping around questions, because... I'm kind of derpy with what to ask you because the main guy who's here to ask you questions is not here. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, Take your time. Boy. So anyway, um, you've been to BronyCon and um, Cantaloupe Gardens? Yes, those are the two I was able to attend. So how was it like, seriously? Because I know a few people here might want to go there and maybe pro in tips because if I remember right, you did one article about your experience there, right? Well, was it called... Um... Um, the retrospective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I had a very positive experience with both of the conventions. Though BronyCon will always be my favorite because it was, well, my very first one. And I was visiting a city I'd never been to before and seeing friends I'd never seen ever. So it was nice to be able to, you know, be there and put faces to the names you see online and stuff like that. And that's truly the best part of the whole, you know, convention experience is really just meeting people that you have known for such a long time online and actually being able to, you know, shake their hand, give them hugs or anything like that. So um, I would highly re recommend going to conventions just to meet your friends and stuff like that. But it's also just the charged atmosphere that these conventions have that make it so... Um, great to attend you have you know voice actors that are there but more importantly you have you know you have all the vendors all the people that are just excited and running around it, it, it makes you feel charged up too and it's um, just an amazing experience it's hard to hard to really describe unless you go see one yourself I highly recommend going to some kind of pony convention if you can pull it off okay because I'm trying as hard as I can to go to a pony con if I can because you know Asia and the states are kind of far apart. Oh yes, it's it's quite a flight over the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, the flight is no problem, but it's just the money. Oh yeah, and it's only getting worse. Ugh. Yeah, plane tickets are so expensive. Indeed. Oh boy. Well, anyway, you said that BronyCon is your first pony convention, right? Yep, I did. That was my very first one. So, um, were you in any other fandom, and did you go to any other conventions besides um, BronyCon? Actually, um, besides BronyCon being my first pony convention, it was also my um, first convention period. I have actually never really been active in any other fan base before ponies, at least um, actively posting stuff and talking. I'm usually a lurker on the internet and stuff like that, person without a name. When I moved into ponies, I became... There's just something compelling about... The entire fan base that makes you want to contribute and be a part of it. 
And, well, that's how I ended up participating in it. I know what you mean, because I've been in a previous fandom, but I had that feeling I need to contribute, so I did. And let's just say my contributions were, yeah. But for ponies, I felt even more. I need to do something even better than doing the stuff I did before. And that's how I made the podcast. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? It's um, just as, There is just this huge amount of like positive energy in the air in the community. I, it, we do have our rough spots and stuff like that, I will admit. But for the most part, the fandom's pretty, pretty supportive and um, is very good at keeping people charged up and encouraged with continuing what they're doing. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Because um, before then, if I were to do a podcast, I got no idea what to do. Because video games, you got a lot of video game podcasts. And then like cartoons, okay, are you an expert in cartoons to dish out whatever you need to say? I don't think so. And then, like anime, oh, there's a thousand in one anime podcast. But uh, if it's if you're not talking about Naruto, Bleach, or One Piece, or even those obscure animes, people are not going to pay attention to you. Mm, yes, exactly. Right now, a lot of the markets out there are saturated and such like that. So when Pony popped up, this unexpected thing, no one really <laughs> saw it coming. So there was this huge void to fill. So. That helps stir people onward to do their own thing and um, try to contribute. And I think explains the charged atmosphere that we have in the community. Yep, especially the music and the videos. Like, even for music, like, I have to say, our community with their creative talents, like, just imagine, we have what? I heard that somebody said that we got 8 terabytes of pony music alone. Yeah, that's it's crazy. It's, um... There's just so much content out there, and it's not just music either. It's artwork as well. You go on to sites like Pony Brew when it was still around, or Derpy Brew, which is, and you see literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pony pictures. It's just crazy, in a very good way, of course. True, true. I mean, like, every fandom has its fans, and ponies, I think we're in year three or year two. We are, it's going to be year three in October of this year. So we're starting to mature. So we're, uh, more or less we're in year two and a half then. So we've been in two and a half years. We've accumulated a lot of talents within that short period of time. Yeah, it's amazing. The, um, I still remember the very first summer, um, the first great hiatus after season one. And it, we didn't have um, things like fleshy compilations or custom compilations when they came around it would be like this tiny five you know five picture post or something like that and um we didn't have the animations we do now there was no things like there wasn't things like um rainbow dash presents um double rainboom any of that stuff wasn't even really being talked about we had about all we had for animation back then was like maybe little um gifs or something like that set to music or something very limited material but now look Looking around nowadays, there's tons of music coming out every day, more art than you can handle, and I think there's at least um, two or three animation posts a week now. I know, it's so awesome. And we, we, we are kind of in of a hiatus moment with two weeks, no ponies. So that shows a lot, like, what we have. Um, I think I've seen some animation posts, um, that cute, derpy voice by... Ball Dumbo Red sitting on a cloud talking about muffins. Oh, uh, that one is full of things. And oh, uh, like there, there, there's a lot of things coming out within this short two weeks. Oh yes, of course. Over vacation, while well, the um, over Christmas break, well, even though the, our inbox did slow down a little bit, we always had stuff to post for the most part. We ran into some problems with getting stuff for the roundup some nights, but otherwise the fandom is even <laughs> active most of the time. Um, during the holidays. So it's a good sign of what is to come when we have the bigger hiatus after season three is over. Yeah, it's true. Um, I have to say, um, the fans, we, we're keeping strong with our things and I don't see us going anywhere. Yeah, neither do I. Not not in the foreseeable future. Yeah, unless Hasbro does something to piss off soft, which I hope they don't. <laughs> uh, me too. We'll just have to see how it goes. Okay... So, Red, do you have any questions? What's your um, most memorable experiences with them? Oh, jeez. Mm, most memorable experience? 
I think that would have to be BronyCon when I um, met Serial and Seth and PK for the first time. That was um, that was quite a time. And just getting to meet them all in person, it was a lot of fun, and it was really nice to get to know them on a um, face-to-face, you know, level instead of just <laughs> these names that are online that also post pony stuff. Awesome. So, getting to meet the boss and the crew, I have to say, um, I haven't met all of my crew members yet, and uh, there's that one wish and one dream kind of situation for me, like, where I want to meet all of them at one place at the same time. Oh, yes. It's um, so hard to, you know, um, negotiate stuff like that to get set up, especially the more people you have. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Like, personally for me, um, I live down the south where most of my crew lives up north at the capital. And one of my crew is in Melbourne right now, I think, studying. So uh, to gather all of us in one place is kind of hard. Oh, yeah, I I could totally sympathize. I'm the only um, staff member that is on the east coast. Oh, well, everyone's more like in the west coast or in the mountains and stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm kind of far away from them. Uh, all the fields. So, uh, I have to ask this. Have you met John DeLancey? Yes, I have met him. It was a funny experience, too, and how I met him. It was um, the closing ceremony of BronyCon. He had um, just given his speech and had walked off the stage. And I was waiting for, I think the staff was going to come up next and start doing their um, goodbyes and whatnot. And um, a friend of mine pokes me in the back. And I turn around, and he whispers in my ear that um, John Delancey was, like, right behind us, like, 10 or 12 feet. He had, sneak, he had snuck in through, like, the side curtain to either take a look at the stage or just sign some last-minute autographs or something. And he was just right there, just signing away um, with this, this small group that was around him of people that actually noticed he was there. So I made sure to get right in there and um, shake his hand, and um, he signed my lab coat. And that was really cool. Did you get a picture with him? Uh, no, I didn't. He was um, so busy. I was the last um, person he um, signed something for. So he was um, in and out really quick. Uh, that's too bad because as far as I know, scientists, there are a lot of trekkies in there. So if you can show them a picture, all of the jellies. Oh, yeah, they that, they would go nuts. <laughs> like, you match on the ah! <laughs> uh, Well, that's a story you can say for later with your... Newfound friends, I guess. <laughs> That's for sure. There's always stories to tell in the pony world. Yeah, man. Like, I met Tara Strong. I met John DeLancey. I've met Lauren Faust. My goodness, those people are my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. We are kind of old, aren't we? <laughs> don't say that yet. I don't want to start feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, won't say it anymore. Here's a f- uplifting topic. How did you get the name Kelpin, and how do you get your OC to look like that? Oh, well, there's actually nothing too special about either. Um, Calpain is actually the name of a um, protein that I worked with when I was doing my master's work at um, one of the at my prior university. I just thought the name was cool and just used it. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be, you know, a name that I would use to identify myself with, you know, too oh. hugely. It was just a random thing I needed to um, fill in a um, form registration <laughs> form, and I just used that, and it just stuck. Okay, well, um, seriously enough, when I type Calpin in Microsoft Word, it has red squiggly lines under it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Microsoft Word is not very good at recognizing science names or terms. <laughs> so. uh, it's more logical, I guess. But how did you design your OC? Is it enough pony with a brown mane, sorry, brown coat and dark brown mane? Um, it's um, a creamish colored yellow um, kind of coat with um, brown mane and um, brown, brown hooves and a brown spot for a muzzle. Um, I actually took the design from um, horses that I had around um, in the countryside where I grew up. Um, I am not all that creative in coming up with colors that work, so I decided to take some inspiration from nature, and I colored um, cow after um, a type of horse called um, buckskin horses, and he has a very similar coloration to those types of um, horse. And I just, it was just um, 
he was just a creation to have an OC because people on the blog had OCs, and I was like, oh, shoot, now I need an OC. <laughs> and so I kind of created him out of – I kind of created him in a rush, but I've really grown to like him. I – I really like him. Yeah, he looks cool with <laughs> with his snout, with that brown colour spot in his snout. I mean, that you don't see every day, actually, for OCs. Yeah, you don't see many um, um, disruptions in the solid, solid colour pattern that you see on a lot of ponies. Yeah, I have to say, yours is unique. Now people are going to copy it, me and my big mouth. <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, I have noticed some more, like, um, painted coloured ponies and stuff like that, like paint horses. Um, similar to what Pipsqueak is. So maybe maybe um, we'll start seeing an increase in those type of OCs sometime soon. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, well, at least you're not an alicorn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at least I'm not an alicorn. I'm just a mud pony. <laughs> yes. So let me see. We've asked you about your being a prof- scientist and you being to most conventions, your work at EQD, and um, I, I wouldn't say personal life, but, well... They will meet up at campus. So um, here's an interesting one I just spotted. Uh, I remember you once interviewed the CEO for Enterplay. Am I right? Yes, that was um, one of the few interviews I did. Have EQD done anything more like that, or is it, or is just EQD a news aggregate site? Um, we try. We have been trying to do interviews um, with people um, over the past few months since you know um, the end. Um, the Enterplay the Enterplay um, interview, but it's just hard to get in touch with the VAs or um, other people for official pony stuff because they're so busy and there's channels you have to go through and you wait for responses forever. Sometimes they get, you know, told a no and then you got to start over again. So it's a very trying process and um, sometimes it's very hit and miss. So we are looking into the possibility of doing more interviews, but, um, Right now, we're currently collaborating with um, the other podcast called um, Bronyville, oh. and they um, typically do interviews and stuff like that of, act- of the actors and the actresses and other important people on the show staff and elsewhere. And we let them, um, since they have set up so good for interviews and stuff like that, they have a good system, we let them do a lot of the interviews and we then post up their interviews on EQD. Yeah. Yeah, leave it to the professionals. <laughs> true, true, because, well, I got inspired by them to do a pony podcast. So, well, if you're letting them do it, I guess you are in good hands. Yeah, they have tons of experience doing that. They're one of the older podcasts out there, and um, they've also met a lot of these people at conventions and such. So they have more experience than a lot of us do here at EQD with the interviewing process. Okay, awesome. So, um, funny enough that you mentioned Bronyville, um, I've noticed that um, Apple Cider has his own um, post on EQD. Is he part of the crew? What we do sometimes is um, if there's something very, very specific that needs to be done on the site on a regular basis, and that it is also like really time sensitive or something like that, um, we'll make somebody like a temporary author or someone that's highly specialized in one thing. Apple Cider is um, just a author on the site so that he can post up his um, announcements for, you know, special things like interviews and stuff like that so that um, it doesn't land in, like, the inbox Mm. and um, sit there and their show starts and no one sees it and, you know, (laughs) that kind of stuff. It's happened quite a few times with um, other podcasts. And since we're collaborating um, with them on some projects and other things... It just makes the whole process easier, is to have him do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can understand, because if I were to do a live show and <laughs> mail it to EQD saying, Guys, I'm doing a live show at this time, please promote it, I'll get a reply to the queue. Yeah, and, and then it gets put in the nightly roundup folder, <laughs> which is, makes no sense. <laughs> by the time we get around to it, by the time I get around to it in the evening, and I'm checking the box, and I see some things for live shows that have already come and gone, I'm like, ah, dang it, you missed one. <laughs> uh, well, um, I'm not doing anything live, so that's good, I guess. <laughs> and it also helps keep us from being so nervous. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. Well, doing a live show is fun because it's uh, very time-limited. And doing a recorded show, we can go for hours and end, but the show will come out under an hour. <laughs> Uh, so, Red, do you have any more questions? I do. 
in like five years do you think you'll still be doing this? Um, I know that um, Seth has no real plans on um, closing down the site or anything like that, even after the pony thing's done. It really depends if um, it really depends if he still needs us around or not. Um, I would be more than happy to, you know, still do it. I love what I do. I love um, the community that I'm a part of, and it, it'd be great if it continues and just keeps going and going because I've made so many good friends and stuff like that. But I, I think that something as big as this community and this phenomenon just can't leave you alone after it's said and done. So I think I'll still be involved, at least in some way, even after Pony has run its course. Awesome, awesome. Like, I have to say, once you're a brony, you're always a brony. You, know, you could leave the fandom, but the fandom never leaves you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you'll always remember it. It'll ha- leave some kind of impression on you. It's true, it's true. I have to say that um, me becoming a brony, a fan of the show, has changed my perspective on life. Because uh, um, back then, I'm a mean person. Now, I'm a mean person too, but selectively mean. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people have that kind of um, thing. Uh, I do remember in the earlier days of how a lot of people would post on places like Pony Chan and stuff like that, how the show had affected them and changed their lives for for the good. So, yeah, I think it's a positive influence on just about everyone in the fandom. Yeah, it's true. I, I've i seen a lot, like, people from 4chan becoming fans of the show, and, well, like I said, they're selectively mean. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's go on to happier topics than being all serious. So, um, do you have any pony swags or merchandise? Um, I'm actually a rather poor student, so not too much. Um, I do have, um, I was able to get a Galacon, not Galacon. <laughs> I wish I was going to Galacon. That'd be great. Awesome. Um, Canterlot Gardens, I did manage to get a um, Twilight plushie. That was um, probably the biggest thing I got there. Um, oh, how big is the plushie? That's pretty good. I'd say about a foot tall. Oh, my. How much was Pretty it? Good. Because, um, well, I've seen, well, White Dove's Creations um, commission price, and let's just say that you can buy a lot of Xbox games or PS3 games. Oh, I know, exactly, yes. Um, it's um, actually wasn't all that bad. She was, I think, priced at like a $100 or something like that, or 150 And um, she's actually very well done, and I really think she was worth the money. It's... They're made by these this one group of um, pony plush creators called, um, well, Pony Plushies. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I've heard they, of them. Um, I've heard of them. Yeah, they um, make um, quality uh, pony goods for sale. They, I think they were the people that actually came up with the USB drive stick thing before the official merchandise came out. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember them because uh, they promoted on, uh, if I remember right, BronyCon. Yeah, I remember right. They promoted on BronyCon's live stream. Yes, you're right. They did, and um, they're they're great people, and they make good products. So, yeah, if you have a chance to buy from them, I would certainly look into it. Yeah, and they do have uh, well, their first batch of thumb drives or flash drive is a Rainbow Dash one, and now they have a Derpy one. It looks really cool. Yeah, they do. I saw the Derpy ones at the um, at um, CG, and they were really well made. They looked really good. And I know that they still have plans to release more um, different types of pony plushies as the um, you know year warriors on and things like that. So they'll have a better selection as time goes. Cool, awesome. So before we end this, Ray, do you have any more questions? No, I'm good. Okay, so I want to ask something really funny. So what was your reaction when you were first asked to become a guest on the show? <laughs> I was... Um, <laughs> I was flattered. Um, I always enjoy being able to um, be on shows and talk to people and answer their questions. Um, it's um, It's been an honor being on here, and it's been a lot of fun. The owner's all mine because getting somebody from EQD, oh, that's awesome. Seriously, that's awesome. Personal achievement for me, yay. <laughs> Glad to be here. And I have to thank Red for it because without Red, we won't be talking to you. <laughs> well, Red is a good guy. Yes, he is. Go support his movie once it's out. It's Rise of the Galiax. When is that thing coming out anyway? Oh, actually, I can 
plug it real quick. We're actually doing a eight to seven minute short film thing to kind of like, you know, test how we work under production time called Dashie's Tale. It should be released. I don't want to like put a date on it, but the script was finished recently. I just got my copy today and um, we should be starting progress on that soon. So, so it will be out soon. Yeah, I'm just going to put soon on because I don't want to put like an exact date on it. So anyway, Kalpain, any questions for us? Um, I, I think we're good. Um, just once again, uh, thanks for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Okay, no problem, because you're awesome and you're a scientist. And how often could you say that I talk to a scientist today? <laughs> well, unless <laughs> you work with day. one. Yeah, unless you work with one, then, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, I, I suck as a host. Moving on, then. So anyway, Kalpain, thank you for being on as a guest. And uh, if you're always welcome to come on again if you like. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just um, send me a message or something if you have any more questions or... You know, just need a guess, I guess. <laughs> Yay, I guess so. Well, triple guess. Yay. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. And my shout-out goes to you, Kelpin, and you, Red Pair. Thank you for being on. And a major thank you to you, Red Pair, for getting us the interview with Kelpin. Because without you, I wouldn't be here sitting, talking to Kelpin. Red, do you have anyone to shout-out to? Basically, the whole crude guy X again. You, Cal Payne. Honestly, I didn't think you'd like um, be mad or something. <laughs> I was like pretty self conscious about everything. But, oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> and uh, you know, Red, for having me on again. Oh, that's no problem. Like I said, without you, uh, we won't be talking to Cal Payne. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> uh. <laughs> anyway, um, Cal Payne, what about you? Any shout outs to give to? Oh, well, to the two of you, um, thanks for having me on and getting me um, involved in all this. I'm always glad to be involved in community projects and podcasts and whatnot. Um, a shout out to your viewers. Um, hope you enjoyed this little segment that we put on today. And I hope you all have um, <laughs> plenty of pony in your lives for days to come. And I just want to give one last shout out to um, the rest of my coworkers at Equestria Daily. You guys are awesome. Yes, thank you. And I, for the fans out there, I'm sorry this episode came out late. Let's just say that I have time issues and I don't know how to read a watch. All time. <laughs> so anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to talk to us, or even complain to us, you can do that at the MBS show at gmail.com. And the show's Twitter is at the MBS show. My Twitter is at Norman Sanzo. Um, you can also reach Daniel at St. Pinky. So, Red, what's your Twitter? It's at Red Pear Inc. It's the guy with the red pair, really. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll add it in the show notes. So, Kelpin, do you have a uh, Twitter? Yeah, I have a, um official EQD Twitter account. Um, it's just at Kelpin EQD. Ah, at Kelpin EQD. I'll add in in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And also, like our Facebook page. Um, links will be provided in the show notes. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Red Pear. And I've been Calpay. And we'll see you next week. See ya.
Stretching out to somehow reach me I know this can't be wrong I'm ready, won't you teach me Your song of kindness Quiet grace surrounds you And helps me find my own I can't tell you how you've helped me And how much I have grown Even though you're far away Inspiration comes from you To shine a little brighter every day If you only knew I will never get upset And I will never ever forget The happiness you made me feel Almost as if you're actually real But your kindness won't betray me I feel your heart Stretching out to somehow reach me I know this can't be wrong I'm ready, won't you teach me Your song won't betray me I feel your heart and soul Your kindness still can save me In a way you'll never know Your kindness won't betray me I feel your heart and soul Your kindness still can save me I choose to not let go Stretching out you somehow reach me I know this can't be wrong I'm ready me the way to get along even when the cold wind's blowing and i want to just give in it wants my heart just knowing i'll hear your voice again so won't you sing it loud and won't you sing it long i promise to remember your song So, Red, do you have any more questions? Um, I just had one on my head. I can't remember it now. I just lost it. You want to play the waiting game? <laughs> <laughs> I might be here for a while. No, it's... Oh, what was it? Does it involve ponies? It probably did. Hmm. Uh, probably Transformers. <laughs> oh, talking about Transformers. Who's seen the new Transformers Prime? Um, I have not, but I had a friend of mine that says it's very good. So I would recommend checking it out. I'd probably check it out um, if, <laughs> if I had more time available. Yeah, me too. I, I need to check out Prime because, well, first it's Hasbro Sting and looks good. The last Transformers I watched was, my goodness, um, animated. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> then it's been a while, right? <laughs> yeah, I do want to know what happened because they cancelled it to only one season. Or was it two seasons? can't remember. Uh, mm, yes, that was I don't a good remember. One. Th- that was a good one. They got Weird L in it. Oh, really? Yeah, I, if I remember, there's one episode where um, a trash compact became a Transformer and it kind of switched side from Autobot to Decepticon at a whim. Don't know why. Kind of strange. And Weird L voices it. And talking about Weird Al, I wish he voices one of the ponies in My Little Pony. Oh yeah, that's been a, a rumor for such a long time. Hopefully it happens someday. That'd be nice. It'd yeah. be nice to get some celebrity, more celebrity guests on the show. He is possible because from his check record of what he's done in the past, he, well, like I said, he voices uh, Transformers in the animated series. And oh, back in the olden days, in the movie, they used one of his songs, Dare to be Stupid. 
Exactly, yes. Um, so, he has had quite a bit of experience with Hasbro, and um, he's also good friends with um, William Anderson, the yeah. um, guy who does the background, the background music for Ponies. So there's a big chance. Yeah, and Just if I remember happens. right, Will posted a thing on his YouTube channel saying, well, he kind of interviewed Weird Al saying, um, would he be interested in being on Pony? And he has a vague answer of, well, maybe, yes, if Hasbro, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how the proper quote went, but he has interest in it. Oh, yeah, he does seem to be interested. So it just all falls, it all comes down to Hasbro asking and um, after they approve an episode with him in it. So <laughs> keep your fingers crossed, or in um, this case, your hooves. Indeed. So anyway, um, Red, do you remember what you want to ask? I do. Hooray! Oh.